Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. A from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Welcome back to part three of our series on the different kinds of light and the effects on our biology and health. In part one, we talked about infrared light. In part two, we talked about red, blue, and green light. And if you missed either of those, you can check the description as well as the comments below to get links to those previous videos. Because today, we're gonna to be talking about sunlight, UV radiation from the sun, we're gonna mention skin cancer, and we're also gonna talk about vitamin D3. This is a very important topic, mostly because we've all heard that vitamin D3 is so essential for health, and it really is. I mean, this is probably, I would say, the single most important vitamin that we know of, and it acts more as like a hormone. It controls so many different reactions in the body. It helps our immune system, helps our bone health, it can boost testosterone, hormone levels, helps our mood. We've heard of what happens when people don't get enough D3. There's seasonal affective disorder, SAD. People get depressed. We need to have vitamin D3 levels, and one of the ways we can get D3 is from the sun. But it's actually not well understood by many people how this works, so I wanna clear it up for you. When we go outside in the middle of the day and we look up at the sun and we see sunlight, not all of that is UV radiation. In fact, around 40 to 45% of that is visible light, the light we can see. Around 40 to 45% of that is infrared light. We can't see it, but we experience it as heat. And around seven to eight percent of that is around UV radiation. Now, the interesting thing is we know that UV light is very high energy and it's a known carcinogen. It can cause cancer, it can also age us. And there are two main types of UV radiation that we need to know about. One is called UVA and one called, is called UVB. UVA makes up the vast majority of the sun's light. It's like 95% of the UV is UVA, and around 5% is UVB. UVB is the more important one because that's the light that actually can burn you. That's also the light that leads to skin cancer, and it's also the light that our skin uses to make vitamin D3. Let that sink in for a second. The same light that actually causes us cancer and causes DNA damage to ourselves is also the light our bodies use to get vitamin D3. And here's the interesting thing. When we get out in the very morning or very late at night, there's actually not a lot of UV out in, in the sun because it's absorbed by the atmosphere, the sun is further away at that time, and we're not getting a lot of UV exposure. So if you're getting out in the morning, as I suggest you do, and getting natural sunshine on your skin, and you're hoping that you're gonna be making vitamin D3, you're actually not making much D3 but you are getting benefits from the infrared light, from that full spectrum light, and benefits of being outside and all that. So I still do recommend, if possible, you get outside during sunrise and around sunset times, you're getting the other benefits of light, but you're not actually making that much D3. The time when that UVB is highest and strongest is in the middle of the day. Let's say like 10 a.m. till around 4 p.m. When the sun is highest in the sky or gets shortest down, you get a ton of UVB exposure. This is when you can get burned, but it's also when you make D3. So this could be a time that you may consider getting outside for five, 10 minutes maybe, getting some sun exposure to get natural vitamin D3 production. But that's the risk, right? If you go too long or you get too much, you could get burned. And this is largely dependent on your skin tone, where you live, what the ozone layer is like where you live. So there's a lot of variables at play here. And when I'm thinking about all these variables, what I think is that it's actually a good idea just not to simply rely on the sun for vitamin D3 levels. It's a good idea to get D3 from many different sources. Certainly some sunshine in the middle of the day, but I don't want you to be outside in the sun all the time in the middle of the day, that could be damaging. It's also good to check out some of these food sources here to get vitamin D from amazing foods, mushrooms, salmon, things like this. They have great D3 that benefits us tremendously. And I guess coupled with a little bit of sun exposure, a little bit of these vitamin D3 rich foods, you're gonna be in good shape. Now. I think it's important also to know about your vitamin D3 levels, and I think it's important for you to get it checked, especially as you get older. If you get regular blood work and they're checking you know, a complete blood count or certain metabolic parameters or your cholesterol or something like that, also order a serum vitamin D3 test. This is where they check the vitamin D3 levels in your blood. And I recommend you get them in 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter of blood. And many people are deficient. And there's even been studies that suggest that over 70% of people are deficient in these levels. And when you have lower levels of these, you get sick more easily, you're more fatigued, your hormones aren't working, so it's worth boosting it up. And this is another instance where knowledge is power. Getting a little bit of data and a simple blood test can give you an idea of where your levels are at right now. and can also tell you, is your supplementation working? Do you need to get more sun? Should you get less sun? Dial in your unique protocol. Here's basically what I do. I get out in the morning for morning sunshine. I'm not getting a ton of D3, but I get a lot of these other light benefits, and it's good to get moving in the morning even if it's a short walk. I do it with my family. It's a very nice way to start the day. 
I also do try to get out in the evening around sun sunset time, or maybe even a little after, and I like to walk after that dinner meal, and also catch a little bit of those nice unique rays as the sun's setting. And then in the middle of the day, I will get outside for five to 10 minutes, typically as a work break. So I'm working on the laptop for a long time, I'll go outside, get a little bit of sun exposure, not too much, and I know I'm getting a nice boost of D3 without going overboard. And as you do that over time, you will build up some bit of a tan base layer, which could be nice. Some people like the look of that, but you also gotta know what your unique skin tone is. If you have very light and fair skin, this may not be a good strategy for you. It might be best to just like get no midday sun exposure and just rely on supplements and foods to get your vitamin D3. So there's not a one size fits all approach here. And I think it's important to know that where you get your D3 is also where you could potentially get your burns. So it's good to have a holistic plan that involves some good supplements as well as some sunshine exposure. And it's also beneficial to get sunlight for reasons other than D3. That's my main point in this video. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. These really intricacies are, I think they're fascinating. That's why I make these videos and I hope you do as well. And I do recommend if you've missed any of those previous videos on infrared light, as well as red, green, and blue, go check those out. There's this whole world of light that affects our biology. It's called photobiomodulation. That's what we've been talking about. And this is an area of research that's gonna to continue to explode, I promise you. You're gonna see so many more people talking about their LED light devices for doing you this and that. And we have the greatest LED, if you will, that is the sun, that if you know how to interact with it properly, you can get a lot of health benefits. So thank you, my friend. Hope you found this valuable in this series. I'll see you around in future videos and I'll talk to you very soon. This is Dr. A signing off.